our meditation time together. I hope that you have had some moments of peace within your day. Regardless of what this day has had, for these next few minutes, we are gonna make peace and calm and ease our focus. So that as we go through the rest of our night, we head into our day tomorrow, the weekend is not far behind, we can take this practice of peace and calm and ease and try just to let it inspire everything that is to come. So let's settle in where we are. Begin to gently close your eyes or cast them down. And then just start to notice the breath as you're beginning to anchor yourself where you are in that familiar space. And just for a few breaths, kind of notice the sounds around you. Notice the way that you feel either seated or lying down wherever you are. Notice the feeling of the air on your skin. And then just the overall physical well-being of how you are in this moment. Just recognize that and pay attention to it and honor it. We've been on this journey the last couple of days together and we'll continue it looking at these moral principles that give us our yoga practice. This yoga practice from which meditation comes. Yoga is so much more than just standing on one leg on a yoga mat, physically practicing. It is truly a guideline for how we treat ourselves, how we treat our world, how we interact with others, how we rest, how we find the present moment, and how we discover this peace that we all desire so much. So as you're settling in, just continuing to breathe nice and slowly in a pace that feels right for you. Our topic for these few minutes that we have is the second moral principle of yoga, and it's called satya. And satya means truth when you translate it. And so before I talk to you just for these few minutes that we have about where I think satya can inspire our lives, I wanna go back to some sacred questions that I ask often. I ask them both in meditations that I lead as well as in my own meditation time to myself. Just these few simple questions, so just listen to them. See what kind of bubbles up or comes into your mind as I ask the questions. And then we'll dig into this idea of satya together. The first question, ask, who am I? Who am I? And what do I want? What do I want? And finally, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? We pose these questions often in meditation. We're always encouraged just to keep asking the questions. Don't worry about asking what the answers are just yet. Just ask the questions. But for us to ever really begin to seek and find throughout our life what our answers to these questions are, we've got to have this understanding of this second moral principle called satya. Because to ask who we are, we've got to be willing to look into the face of our truth. As human beings, we have these two great needs. One of them is a need to belong and we also have this need to grow to keep becoming this incredible version of ourselves just to keep growing and developing and maturing in our insight and our wisdom it's not about being better or different it's just about growth but oftentimes what we find is our need to belong and our need to grow are sometimes in conflict with one another. And so I'd like us to pause for just these next couple of breaths and just think to ourselves, what groups do I belong to? They could be cultural groups. They could be family groups, professional colleagues. They could be religious groups, groups that you've got this common interest or this common talent or passion with. You could have groups that you play sports with or do activities with, groups of other parents of kiddos that your kid goes to school with. There's so many groups that we belong to. And so just ask yourself, am I the real version of me 
no matter which group I'm with today. And there's just kind of this old adage that says, you know, I've got this really pretty package, this box, and I wrap myself up in this box and I put this beautiful bow on it and that's what I present to the groups that I belong to. But sadly, when we do that, that means that none of those groups, none of those people ever get to see the real version of us. We've packaged it up in a way that we think they'll like us better or they'll accept us more. But then comes this need that we all have to grow, to keep challenging ourselves, to keep pushing ourselves in this growth that we want to experience. And sometimes, like I said, it is in conflict with all these groups that we identify with. So then which is bigger? The need to belong or the need to grow? Or a third alternative, is it possible to have both at the same time? And I would say that through my study and my striving to live out satya or truth, it's very possible. But I will also tell you that my groups have become less. My circle has become a bit smaller because sometimes when we are truly in touch with our own truth and we know who we are and we're so okay with who we are, other people can't quite accept it or love us that way. And so we have to decide for ourselves if we'll be okay with that. But I would encourage you in these moments that we have together tonight that once you get to the other side and you're able to say to someone or to a group that you belong to, this is who I am, this is what I believe, this is what's important to me, and I really like myself like this. And I hope that you will too. If you can get, not if, when you can get to that point in your lives, friends, there is nothing sweeter because all of a sudden you find the groups with which you belong and with which you can grow. And it is a beautiful thing to experience. It doesn't mean that there are not still moments when I wanna package myself up and put on a nice bow and a, and a smile and not let the burdens of my heart or the worries that I have show. But I will tell you that more often than not, I'm able to live out my truth because I'm that grounded in it now. There's a movie with Julia Roberts where she's this person who keeps wanting to marry all these different men. And there's this joke throughout the entire film where with each man she's engaged to, she professes to like a different kind of egg from over easy to poached, to scrambled, to you name it. She professes to like the kind of egg that that man likes. And then toward the end of the film, as you can all predict, she realizes she doesn't like any of them. But sadly, she also doesn't know which kind of egg she actually does like. So she goes on this journey to try them all and she finally discovers the one egg. And it has nothing to do with those relationships or the groups that she wanted to belong to. And it's such a silly example, but I think that we all do that at different points in our life. And so I want us to enter our quiet time and I wanna ask you those three questions again. And then I'm gonna pose three more to follow and let those questions just hang in the air that we're sharing together and see what arises in your mind and in your heart. Who am I? What do I want? What is my purpose? And am I ready to know my truth? Am I ready to speak my truth? Am I ready to live my truth? Even if it means there may be some groups to which I don't belong anymore. And so let's just sit with those questions. It's not a thing to solve tonight or today in these moments. It truly is about asking the big questions. Satya. 
truth. Let's just sit and breathe and see what arises in each of our minds through the next couple of moments that we have together. Just begin to bring your attention back to the space where we are all are together. Just notice what you saw in your mind's eye, what patterns of thoughts came up during those few minutes of quiet. Don't worry about doing anything with whatever arose. Just be aware of it. Because remember our meditation practice, it is part of a journey. We don't show up on our cushion or in our chair in our spot expecting to solve all the answers in one moment. But we do come because we have this need to grow. And this idea of also having a need to belong, just think for a moment how even though we are all sitting and listening to these words from very different physical locations in our homes and probably from very different spots within our life's journey with very different experiences. There is a group represented within our meditation community. Those that listen live, those that listen later on, but it is still a group that you can identify that you belong to. A group where you are allowed to be exactly who you are someone who's on a journey of growth, on a journey of truth, and on a journey of continuing to ask the questions of who am I? And as the answers begin to come up, being really okay with understanding who you are. And I cannot think of a better group to which we should belong. One that allows for growth and reminds us that we're not on this journey along, alone. Keep asking the question. Keep seeking your truth. And eventually you'll get to the point in your life where you are truly living it out every single day. Namaste.